Would you like to live your best life possible, regardless of your imperfections? Discover cutting-edge tools and inspiration to let go of your limitations and expand your life beyond what you've ever imagined. On Imperfect Brilliance, we help you tap into your unique gifts and talents, uncovering and letting your brilliance shine. Join certified facilitator and coach Betsy McLaughlin as she delves into different areas of your life to get unstuck and create the life that is truly possible for you. Betsy has changed her life by utilizing the tools and techniques she is sharing with you. What if your willingness to acknowledge your brilliance is the catalyst to creating a new reality? When you stop judging you, what else can you create in your life and in the world? Join Betsy live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern to create magical and joyous possibilities for an hour of laughs, questions, tips, and more. We are excited to contribute and play with you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Imperfect Bryant. I am your host for this time, Betsy McLaughlin. And it's so funny, I went for a minute, I was like, oh, what's my name? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I guess it's going to be one of those days. So I am so happy that you are here. And I have a wonderful lady on with me today, Miss Christine. Oh, so first of all, I would just Hi. like to say thank you for showing up, Christine, and playing, being Yay. willing to play with us today. <laughs> Absolutely. So much fun. Thank you for having me, Betsy. And how do you pronounce your last name for everybody? Yeah, it is Siona. Siona. That's mm. right, Siona. You told me the other day, and I, I, I was like, I'm not going to try to remember, and yep. uh, but you're it. So I figured I would just ask you to tell us. So Christine, she is such a fun person, you guys, and I'm really excited that she's here with us today. She lives in Swift Current. Saskatchewan, Canada. She is she is a private practice counselor. She is a certified bar facilitator. She is I love this. She is an abundant living guide. Yay! Yay! So a, much fun. I love that so much, honestly. And she's inspired to bring joy to the planet. Yes. How much more joy can we all be contributing and bringing to this wonderful world of ours? So today, and is there anything else you would like to tell us about you? And before I forget, too, we'll go ahead and tell people how they could find you. Sure. So if people want to say hi and uh, reach out, you can find a little bit more on my website, which is capacitiesunleashed.com. And yeah, I'm just really happy to be here and help unleash the capacities and the brilliance and the joy with you and everyone who's listening. And yeah, what are we going to create today? I wonder. Oh, that's so cool. So today we are going to be actually talking about one of my favorite things to talk about, and that is creating yumminess. And today we're going to talk a lot about how we can create yumminess with our bodies. And Christine has a little bit of a backstory, if you will. She had sure. childhood cancer, and she has had, I'm sure, all kinds of things projected at her, you know, points of views from doctors and other people you know, family members and probably even yourself and mm -hmm. all kinds of not fun experiences with doctors and maybe hospitals and all of that. So she, she's going to share with us you know, how she's let go of some of that energetic stuff that can be, you know, that you carry around with you. And then I'm yeah. sure we'll go lots of other places. So why don't you just give us a little bit of um, your story, Christine? Sure. So, yeah, you know, when we, when we think about yumminess and yumminess in our bodies, um, you know, you and I have talked before about that. I think most of the time we want to refuse the yumminess and we get into story and we get into the drama and the wrongness and all a bunch of other things. 
And we make the stories of our bodies, like what we put on our bodies, um, a big deal. And so, yeah, I was I was 13 when I was diagnosed with childhood cancer, and lots of stuff goes through your body. There's now, you know, a disease hanging out in your body, and medicine, and needles, and I mean, physically, there's changes that show up. Um, sure. But what showed up as an adult, what was really interesting is even though it's been years since I was sick and I am not sick, my body's healthy and well and good, um, I had no idea about the layers of mm. almost like energetic toxicity that I was holding in my body from, from way back then. And it was just, it was totally unconscious. And I started using the tools of access consciousness. Wow. I was doing um, access body processes on me. And I was just, re I was really aware that I was judging my body in ways that I didn't realize I was. Um, mm. And and what came up was, wow, Christine, this is so interesting. Like that's been so long ago and it's not mine. It's not mine. And that piece about how we take on the energetic projections and the energetic, mm -hmm. the energetics of everyone on the planet when they hear cancer or when they hear yeah. whatever that is. And, and I absorbed it and it was mm -hmm. gross. <laughs> it was gross. And I remember like, I, you know, I just decided, like, this is, I mean, I could keep choosing that, but I didn't want to. It wasn't creating more for me. And so back in March, I mean, I've been using the tools of access consciousness for probably, like, five or six years. And you get it when you get it. And my body was now ready to show me, and I was ready to hear from my body in this new way and realize okay, cool, there's, like, levels of toxicity in an energetic way in my body that I want to let go of now. Mm -hmm. So I used the tools of access and um, dropped about 40 pounds in, in maybe six months of just energetically allowing my body to no longer hold what it was not, um, what was mm -hmm. not contributing to it. And to then just allow me to receive the yumminess, to be the yumminess wow. of me. Um, so yeah, that awesome. is absolutely, you know, there's so much that you said in there with the, the whole toxicity piece. Mm -hmm. Besides what might be pumped into your body through drugs or whatever, as well as the energetic piece. And I, too, have, you know, I had uh, cancer. And I had six months of chemo every day and six weeks of radiation. So, you know, you imagine like what happened, you know, like what that did to my body. And so, yes, you have the physical part, but then you also have the energetic of it. So you talk about the tools of access consciousness. So for anybody listening, it is a whole mode that might not know. It is a whole modality, a body of work that there's tools and questions and body processes, mm -hmm. which Christine mentioned a little earlier, that all, you know, you can play with one or a whole plethora of these things that for both of us and many, many, many other people have contributed just greatly to their lives. So when you said that you used some of the tools, what mm -hmm. were these tools that you used? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, there were definitely some access body processes that I ran on my body. Um, so if you haven't, if that's all new mm -hmm. for people listening, definitely go to the Access Consciousness website and check that out. And there's body process facilitators and access that can help you out. Um, so I was using some body processes, but the, the, on top of that, that piece about staying in question and um, deleting all the points of views I have about my body. So what I would do actually is I didn't try to figure it out. I didn't try to figure out oh, is this because of my chemo? Is this because of my bone marrow? Is this because of my 
like the diagnoses, I, I let all of that go. And I, one of the greatest tools, I would stand in front of a mirror and I'd be naked and I would rub my hands all over my body and I would just say whatever points of view are in my body that are not creating ease, joy, and awesome, mm. I delete you now. Right, wrong, right. good, bad, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And I just like literally did it like an energetic body scrub rubbing my hands and I would you know put my hands on my hips I've got juicy hips and they're smaller than they were but I still have juicy hips (laughs) and and I would feel like I'd feel the rage I'd feel the anger I'd feel the crank and I would touch my legs and I'd be like and I'd feel the crank and I'd be like okay that's not me. That's not mine. I'm ready to let you go now. Whatever anger is in my legs, I release you. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, all nine shorts, boys and beyond. And that's the clearing statement. And I would run the clearing statement on my body. I would delete points of views that I knew of and that I didn't know. And I was just ready. Like, for me, it was, Betsy, really, like, willing mm-hmm. to be different. Like, like, the body that I knew was asking for something else. And it wanted to be a body that I did not yet know. And so I was willing to allow the body I do not yet know to arrive. And I would, I would just, I would do an energetic scrub and an energetic wash of my body and allow whatever thoughts, feelings, points of views I have about my body that are not a gift to, to, (laughs) <laughs> fuck off to <laughs> go away right wrong get that <laughs> fuck off yeah. I'm sure it's worth beyond well and that you know these the, the weird sounding words that would be like make no sense is the it really just is like an energetic mm-hmm. wand that clears out gunk you know so mm-hmm. whether or not you know you want to use that that's totally up to you you don't have to but it's yeah. it's about talking about like just clearing out the energetics and what we don't realize is is how it kind of sticks to us like you know lint or something where it's just all these things um you know so whatever works for you to clear it out whether it's anything we're talking about or something that you find for you you know and any part of your life that you can look at and say you know where what have I been carrying around with me that maybe I don't need to anymore? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then because all of those things that you were carrying around, were they contributing to the life and the living that you desired to create or was it creating something else? It was heavy. Like it was not, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, it wasn't creating my life. It was, slowing down my capacity to create. And what's interesting for me, I mean, if people are listening, we're we're in our bodies all the time, but most of the time we're not in connection with it. And what happened for me is the more I connected to my body, the more my body was showing me what was not helping it. And then I had to choose, it's like, do I go there and allow my body to let that go or do I stay comfortable? And comfortable uh-huh. didn't create for me. Uh-huh. And the, there was a period of probably two weeks in that whole time where I was like, okay, this is it. Like I am no longer going to hold the toxic judgment of my body from any anything in my life whether it's cancer or whatever and and my body released it and Betsy was crazy I belched (laughs) like a crazy woman I burped up gas for like two weeks I I was burping like an Alka-Seltzer commercial I could not (laughs) stop belching and my and and it was uncomfortable I was I was achy I was in pain and I was aware that this was my body letting go of all the toxic energies that no that it was not contributing and I did that and lost a whack of weight and felt awesome and it was fun to belch it out because I was ready to choose it it wasn't comfortable but it was 
fun. Isn't that something? And, you know, so our bodies are constantly showing us. So, you know, you're talking about the belching piece and all of that. It's like that was an amazing way for your body to literally be releasing it out. And one of the things that fascinates me about these beautiful energetic body processes that we play with is what I will sense, and not all the time, but sometimes, you know, what I sense releasing from my body. And I'm like, I had no idea that was even in there. And it, it could be very light. It could be sometimes I actually feel like this whoosh goes through my body and I'm kind of like, whoa, what was that? And it doesn't hurt or anything, but it's just like, you know, this, the movement and the energy. And we are so much more all of that than we realize. And, you know, so it's, it's fascinating to me. Anyhow, I could, you know, that's why I always recommend to somebody who they've never had anything like this, you know, whether it's Reiki or access bars or uh, we do energetic facelifts, we do all Mm -hmm. kinds of other body processes or something else, quantum touch or something. Like if you've never done anything like that, you know, like whatever, you're pulled to try, then go play with it. Go try it. You know, yeah. reflexology, you know, like whatever, like what would your body enjoy? And that's kind of what we're talking about today, right? Like creating yumminess for your body, yeah. nurturing and whatever that is. So I'm not here to tell you that I have all the answers or anything like that. And I don't think Christine is either. Mm-hmm. Um, Right. But it's like sharing some of our own personal experiences. And I tell you what, I wish that I had had what I know now when I was going through the cancer treatments um, and the surgery and everything. It would have certainly made things a lot easier. But, you know, you know, it happens when it happens. And I might not have been open to receiving the information back then. Um, And But when I was ready, I found it, and I heard about things that all kind of led me down this path. Oh, my gosh. Time for our first break, you guys. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. (laughs) Free your mind with OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at omtimes.com. Om Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Are you looking to change anything in your life, to have an even greater appreciation of everything around you? Would you enjoy having a life of more joy and greater abundance and explore what is possible for you? My name is Betsy McLaughlin, and I invite you to explore simple and pragmatic tools that I share on my radio show, Imperfect Brilliance. I know firsthand that you can change anything. We explore tools and questions with amazing guests, offering all kinds of conversations on living your best life. I invite you to listen in Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern to Imperfect Brilliance. Consider a coaching call with me and let's explore what you would like your life to be like. Visit my website at www.creatingyumminess.com and you're invited to call in to Imperfect Brilliance with your questions, Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 
6 p.m. Eastern. I look forward to connecting. A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part, because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. How much more yumminess can we create with our bodies? And I am having this conversation today with Christine Tiona. And yay. yay, thank you so much. And we were talking about all the energetic stuff that we keep in our bodies right before the break and some of the things that you did to release it from your body. I mean, what else do you would you like to share with your journey in creating more communion and yum for your body? Yeah. I love that question. Holy smokes. Communion and yum with your body. (laughs) Um, A big piece for me that has allowed more communion and more yum for me is to be willing to be the joy um, in my life. And I'll often tell people Um, or invite them to ask, like, what would it take to be the joy magnet in your life? Because we often look outside of ourselves for for the yumminess. We look outside Mm -hmm. of ourselves for the answer with our bodies. Um, And and what if you're the magnet, you know? What if you are the magnet of the joy? What if you are the magnet of the yumminess? And... And so that has been something that I like to do for myself every day. And rather than making it about my body, um, because then that's just me projecting my stuff onto my body, instead of um, how much fun can I have with my body today? And, And asking that, like, how much fun can I have with my body today? How much fun can my body be if it was the joy magnet? And then it's really interesting because my body will show me what the fun is and then I can choose it or not choose it. And what has happened sometimes is I'll find I'm not choosing it. Like my body will want to lie down in the grass and do nothing in my backyard. And then I have to, you know, listen and go, really? Like, but shouldn't you be doing something? Shouldn't you be working? Shouldn't you be getting things done. And if I ask the question, okay, well, what does my body want to create more yumminess? What does my body want to have more joy? And it'll say, you know, lie down in the grass and look at the sky. I'll find my, my human brain will go, oh, well, you shouldn't do that. That's just silly. (laughs) And then how much fun can I have choosing to listen to my body. And it doesn't have to be a you lie down in the grass all day long. It might just be a five minute hit of looking up into the sky. So I just have fun allowing my body to show me because I'm asking the question, like mm-hmm. how much fun can I have today being the joy magnet? And what does the bo- what does my body know that would create more joy? And you know, there's I love that Even that question, body, show me. Show me Mm -hmm. what you would like to do. Because how much time, I mean, probably 99.99999% of the time of my life, at least as an adult, I have overridden what my body has wanted Mm. to show me. (laughs) Right, so now I'm relearning, like just getting myself kind of out of the way and be like, all right, body, show me. What would you enjoy doing today what would you enjoy wearing um and it may or may not be the same thing that I would like to do and you know so when it's when you're not in tandem in agreement what 
do you do you actually like say to your body, well, I'm going to choose this and I hear you and I'll we'll do that later? Or mm. what do you do so that you're staying in communion? Yeah, great question. Um, part of that is I try to ask more questions and if I'm, which, you know, can sound ridiculous. You know, I can kind of hear my dad <laughs> in my head right now going, well, you can't just always ask questions. You have to just choose something. Um, so I would just, mm-hmm. if I'm noticing that I'm out of sync with, you know, if my body's saying lie down and rest, or if my body is saying go for a run and, and I'm resisting that, then I'll ask a question, I'll ask another question, like, is now the time to choose that? Or if it's not now, when can I choose that? And I will write it down, like, I'll put it in my schedule. Um, and an example, Betsy, um, you know, my, I used to think that I'm not a runner. And there's sometimes in my life, in my head, I'll still say that. I'm like, oh, I don't run. I don't run. Like, I just cha <laughs> yeah. Um, I had asked my body, I'm like, hey, body, what would you like to do today that would be really fun for you? And I got this message, voice going, run. And I laughed. I like, that's crazy. You're not a runner. And then I'm like, wait a minute. And so I asked again, body really like is running what you're asking for right now? And it said, yeah. And so, okay. I had, I had, I noticed I was, not, I was refusing that. I was judging it. I also judged like your body's too big to run. Uh-huh. And, and so I just, again, I just been like, well, whatever that is, I'm going to delete it. And I have, I have my back and I, my body has my back. Yeah. And, and if I want a different life, I have to start choosing different. And so I downloaded the app one day. I downloaded the Nike run app and that was the choice I made that day. I didn't run that day, but I downloaded the app that day. (laughs) And then, you know, these little baby steps. So we think it has to be, you know, all or nothing. And it might just be a a week of whispers and you're just listening all week long, run, 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 run. And then at one point you might choose it. And it's not wrong to not run that day. It's just to notice what you're choosing. Mm-hmm. It's so true. And it is, you know, it's whispers, it's baby steps. And I, too, you know, feel like I got to do all or nothing. And then you know, where anywhere I have that point of view, it's like, well, wait a minute. Is that true? Like, what are you what are you saying to yourself and how is even just saying that stopping yourself before you even start, because then you start to feel overwhelmed or like, there's no way I can do it all. So mm-hmm. why even bother starting? Mm-hmm. And so like all that nonsense that we can say to ourselves is like, what if we just actually stop? <laughs> and I love that. Yeah. You're like, just one day I downloaded the app. That's all I did. It's like, Oh, okay. And you can feel even the, the ease with that and that there was no, there was no force. There was no engagement. There was none of that. It was just like, okay, that's what I did today. All right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love that. There's that piece in there about, you know, what if it's easy? What if yumminess was easy? What if joy was easy? You know, and, and this piece about like, and I see this, I see this in my life sometimes, but also in the people that I work with is that we make joy and yumminess so hard and so separate from ourselves that we don't realize we're choosing it. I'll say that. Yeah. So like we make the joy and the yumminess of our lives so separate from us and so hard that we don't even notice when we're choosing it. And what would it take to actually celebrate the joy we are being? What would it take to celebrate the yumminess we are choosing rather than, you know, Oh, I'm not the runner. It's like, well, no, Hey, I like downloaded the app. <laughs> I tried on spandex pants today. <laughs> like all the things <laughs> right. we, we are choosing. 
And, and there is joy always, and there is yumminess always, and it's who we be when we're allowing it to, to when we're allowing ourselves to be, to, um, to celebrate it, to witness it, um, because it's in us. And it truly is. Yeah, how much yeah. fun is that? It truly, truly is. And with all of this that you have shared today, like, have you been able to let go of the, and I, like, for lack of a better way to say this, you know, like, that you're a cancer survivor and that Mm -hmm. label. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know. I, totally, and I'm smiling really big right now, and I, I want to laugh because, um, oh my God, Betsy! Like the stories we make yep. in our lives are so ridiculous, and that yet they limit us so much. And even as a kid, like I never, um, I never bought the word survivor. Because mm-hmm. I thought, wow, if I'm surviving something like that's like a fire, like then this is a problem. And and so I was really weird as a kid going through it anyway. What happened is yes, I bought the I bought the energetic crap, but I wasn't aware of that until, you know, twenty years after being sick. As a kid, when I went through the chemo experience we were in it in a really weird way as a family. Like we took Polaroids of every single thing that I went through. We made photo boards. Like we were like, like, like the Simpsons do cancer. Like it was, it was a really fun experience on a weird level and not fun at the same time. Sure. It was fun when I wasn't buying the story. It was it was, it was not fun when I was buying the story. And so for me, the, the more that I am just my magic, the more that I am my brilliance, the more that I am the joy of me, nothing can stick me. No story can stick to me when I am being the joy of me. Uh, that is so perfectly said no story can stick to me when i am being the joy of me it's like the the water going off the back of a duck you know it just Mm -hmm. keeps sliding on by when you're Mm -hmm. not buying it whatever it is whether it's something you tell yourself or something someone else tells yourself and you know like some people have said those kinds of things to me as well like wow you're a cancer survivor from a long time now and I'm just like yeah that just doesn't really resonate in my world like yeah no that was just no and it is interesting how how so many people will like cling to that and it's it's not what I choose and it's it's not again not making anybody or anything wrong it's just like how much more because those were even those words, you know, you have cancer is like you have been kicked in the stomach with a sledgehammer and, you mm-hmm. know, like run over by a car and all of those things. And your whole entire life kind of just goes, you know, to a screeching halt. And then it, I really at that point in time was like, OK, how am I going to handle this? You know, what is my you know, and going through all the treatments and I definitely was like, all right, I, I'm choosing to have joy in my life. I'm choosing to laugh. And cause there's so much seriousness around all of this and sure. right. And it's okay. I've got to do something to lighten the mood for myself. And, um, that, so those were some of the things that I did and, and, you know, I, I think I've talked about this piece, too, on the show where, you know, people call me because, you know, like, what do I do? I've got, you know, a friend of mine or my mother or my sister or whatever is going through it, and I don't know what to do for them. I don't know what to be. And I'm like, okay, first of all, just be you, right? Mm-hmm. Don't change who you be. They certainly aren't changing. Yes, it is something they're going through, but it does not define mm-hmm. who you are. And then from that, like, 
do things that they enjoy and that bring them laughter. And especially when you're going through that. And that was my point of view. Like, I'm going to have as much fun as I can through and navigate through these slippery slopes of something I have no idea of. Right. So, and then that bringing that joy and infusing it in every situation in your life. How much is that a gift to you, even in the most? daunting of things so christine i think we're about to head to the next break sure. but i would love for you to remember this question and talk a little bit about it as we when we come back about you know what do you do during the really like the darker times and then what do you do to get back to you so that you don't have those things sticking on you. Um, so you Perfect. guys are listening to Imperfect Brilliance, and we are talking about creating yumminess with your body, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Or maybe not. <laughs> I think. <laughs> <There we go>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. much more yumminess can we all create with our bodies? That is our conversation today. And we've got Christine with us talking a little bit about how she has changed some things in her life. And, you know, interestingly enough, you guys, when I was first looking at creating my website name, you know, logically, I was like, well, I should have it be my name. And it was just something was something different was asking to be made. And I was looking at what is that? And people always were telling me that I create a lot of yumminess in their lives, in my life. And, and it was just one of those things that stuck. I was like creating yumminess. huh? So that is how my website kind of came about. And it's, or, you know, like the, this whole creating yumminess in your life, with your body, with your money, with relationships, like truly with every part of your life, there's so much that we can explore. And today we are talking about more uh, on our bodies. And Christine has been my guest today. And do you remember my question that I asked you before? The yes, break? yes. Thank you I so actually much. Wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we were chatting. Uh, you were asking me, Betsy. You know, what do you do during the darker times to get back to you mm -hmm. to kind of get out of the spin? 
and um, you know, we were chatting about having cancer. So my cancer experience was when I was 13. And so Mm. the 13 year old me and the adult woman me are very aware of different things and choose different things. Um, Sure. And at that time, um, you know, the piece that when things did get dark, one of the things I didn't do was drop my barriers and be vulnerable. I, I learned um, or I chose to think at that time that if I actually was real and true with what I was aware of, that um, my feelings would be so powerful that they would, they would kill people. Like that I would just, mm. the, the, the emotions that I was mm. going through were so big that I hid them and I didn't allow them. I didn't allow it to be expressed because I really thought if I was real and true about what I was going through, then like I would, my, my family would die. This would kill my parents. I couldn't possibly tell them what was really happening for me. And so I wow. just kind of suck, stuck it all in my body. Yeah. Um, and, and I, and it was unconscious. Like it was not, it wasn't a, a, a choice of like, oh, I'm not going to tell my family this sure. because blah, blah, blah. It just happened. So sure. now the awareness that I have now is, you know, yes, we go through dark times and yes, shit happens. And yes, you always have choice. And I never asked questions like that when I was little. Mm-hmm. And even as an adult, like now that I'm aware of access consciousness and the tools that are creating more for my life, um, what gets me out of darkness is to know that 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 I am I am greater than this experience. I am I I am bigger than that moment. I have an energy and a capacity that is greater and beyond this thing that I'm making big. And so I try, and sometimes it's a try, and sometimes it happens with a great ease, is to just drop my barriers and expand out and to expand out and to expand out and to expand out and to just allow my being and my and to, and my body to have my back, which means not getting trapped in my head and my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And when I do that, then I have way more choice. And it's really hard to describe because it's not like you know the way to get abs is to do twenty five sit ups every day. It's like it's it's not a recipe. It's just an invitation to okay. What would it take, Christine, to just melt into this, to melt into you, and to choose the joy in this moment? What would it take to melt into this, to melt into you, and to choose the joy in this moment, to choose the yumminess in the moment? And it means being radically different. Like, to choose joy in cancer is insane, but way more fun. To choose joy in, you know, pain is insane, but <laughs> way more fun. And, <laughs> and it's possible because you're bigger than this moment. Yeah, and that that's so true. And you know, sometimes it you can definitely lose sight of it, and and it's it's a moment, and where you that's sometimes you know where you you it's great to remind yourself of your strength and your potency and that you actually are way more potent and strong than you realize you are and that mm-hmm. you've got this you have your own back number like number one you have your own back and with that no matter what happens like you have you have a lot of choices. And so with that, it's like, what would you like to choose? And what if none of your choices are bad or wrong? It's 
that used yeah. to make myself so wrong for my choice. And like, if I made the wrong choice, well, then I stink, I suck, I'm this, I'm that, I'm so wrong, I'm so bad, you know, and I would just go down this black hole of wrongness of me. And that certainly doesn't create yummy for my life or my body. <laughs> yeah. So it, but the, the wonderful thing is, yes, you can change it. And that's the piece where we mm-hmm. have the power to change it. So with these things that we've been talking about today, like, um, and I know that Christine has to leave us shortly. So before mm-hmm. you leave, um, if you could even just give us maybe your top go-to things that when you're maybe not in your happy, joyful place that you use and you play with to get that back mm-hmm. for you. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's really interesting you asked that, Betsy, of like what you do to get mm-hmm. back to you when you're not in that happy, joyful place. What's really cool is like I've been in the happy, joyful place for so long, it's rare that I spin, which is really awesome. That and is so, amazing. Yeah. So that. one of the pieces is I don't wait to use, I don't wait to choose the joy until mm-hmm. I start to spin. You know, like, Sometimes, I mean, if we think about the yumminess for your body, you know, you're choosing, you're, you're creating this really cool invitation for people for 21 days to choose to create yumminess with your bodies. And, you know, oftentimes we don't go to the chiropractor until we have a crick in our neck or we don't go for the massage <laughs> until we have pain or, oh, I'm not going to choose the yumminess of my life until I start to feel not yummy. Mm -hmm. And so for me, why wait for the shit when you can actually just engage the joy muscle every day? And who doesn't want more joy? So one of the tools, like I do this every, every, every day. Before I get up, before I put my feet on the floor, I will ask two things. I'll ask, body, show me the joy of you today body show me the joy of you today and then I'll ask Christine listen to the joy of your body today Mm. because I can get really I'm really great at creating and doing lots of things and being busy and choosing fast and go go life and then I'm also sometimes when I'm there I'm not I'm not listening to my body. So I'll ask those two things like body show me the joy of you today I wonder I wonder like what the with this childlike curiosity, what that joyful body is going to show me today, and and then I'll ask me the head of me, <laughs> Christine, you know, be ready to receive and be in like listen to the joy of your body today, so that I'm allowing, I'm setting that intention before my day even begins, before I put my feet on the floor. Mm-hmm. Because usually we are so creatures of habit. We'll put our feet on the floor, and then we're just going to be go, 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 do, do, do. We're going to create how we've always created and wonder why we still are choosing the same things. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'll just, that question of, like, body, show me the joy of you today, and being, you know, Christine, receive the joy of your body today, and let's go. Let's play. I wonder, I wonder what's going to show up. Mm. That is absolutely beautiful, and I, uh, you guys stick around. We'll be talking a little bit longer, but Christine has to hop off. Yes. Thank you so much for being Thank on you, with me Betsy. today. And her, website, her website is capacitiesunleashed.com. So thank you, Christine. Have a great rest of your day. And we're you gonna, too. Thank you. And we're just going to finish up the hour where we're going to talk um, more about the creating yumminess with your body. And I wonder for all of you guys, Christine has some great questions and some great things. And I love that tip about before you even get out of bed, you know, are you connecting with your body? Are you setting the intention for what you would like your day to be. And I, I love that. And I'm, I'm thinking, wow, I wonder what else I could do, what else I could create. 
and add to my life that would create more ease. And that's part of what I wanted to talk about was it doesn't have to be hard. And so these are all little things that we are doing and suggesting little tweaks. You might be doing a lot of these things already. And what else could you add? Um, uh, One of the tips that I heard, I don't know, maybe six months ago where, you know, when you feel like you're insanely busy and you feel overloaded and you're like, oh my God, I can't do anymore. I actually heard this suggestion and it said, add more, add more to your life. And you're like, wait, what? I already feel like I'm on complete overwhelm and you're saying add more. And I was like, you know what? Let me try it. Instead of just deciding, let me try it. And what was funny was I added one more thing and then everything else became easier. So, and then that's what I wanted to talk about is like actually how much more ease could you create with your life? So that's not logical at all, right? You already feel overwhelmed. You've already got way too much to do. You want me to add something else? That might be something to play with. So what if it's actually different than what you think? So with what if it is different and it's way easier than we think it is to create ease in our lives, to create yumminess, to create joy? And, you know, I make a lot of decisions and conclusions, a lot of snap judgments and All of those snap judgments and decisions and conclusions can basically stop me in my tracks. And that does not create the yumminess that I desire to create. So with that, when I realize what I'm doing, or if I might not realize it, it might be just like, you know, this isn't going as smoothly or as easily as I get that it could be. So then that's when I start asking questions. And if you guys are new to the show or just as a reminder, you don't need to have the answers. It's asking the questions. So what questions could I ask here? Sometimes I even just ask that because I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to ask here. So what question could I ask? If I, you know, if I knew not this, what else could I ask? What else is possible? So you don't even have to have the perfect question to ask here. You know, it's it's totally um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's all it's totally always just fluid, and what what pops in in the moment. So creating yumminess, having communion, having embodied the joy of your body, the joy of embodiment for me has been quite the journey. I have created a 21 day program of creating yumminess with your body. And it's going to be daily Facebook lives in a private Facebook group. We are going to have a zoom at the end of the 21 days to answer questions and facilitate in between, you know, there will be that private Facebook group where questions can be asked and facilitation and, who knows what else will show up, but those that's kind of the rough outline of what we're going to do, and it starts October 14th, so if you guys are interested, it is on my website. It's $21 for 21 days, creatingemminess.com, so check that out. I wanted to be sure to invite you guys to that, and then here's some tips, whether you choose it or not. What could you create for you today? What brings you joy? Can you stop for a few minutes and just be with you? We're all so busy and we have a lot going on, you know, and a lot of distractions and things coming at you from all kinds of directions. You know, your phone, your Skype, your WhatsApp, your Facebook, your emails, you know, your doorbell ringing, the kids, the dogs, the car, you know, like whatever it is, your work, there's so many things and we can very easily lose ourselves in all of that and put ourselves last. I'm an expert at putting myself last. So I do have to 
remind myself, and I still do, is like, okay, what does my body require today? What does my, and my body will get loud if I ignore what she's asking me for. Uh, you know, my eyes start burning if I've been on the computer too long. Okay, I need to close the computer screen, walk away for a little bit, go outside, or just do whatever. And so and if we're willing to have more and more and more communion with our bodies and ask our bodies to show us what they require, they tell us. And one of the things that I've said to my body is, you know, body, we speak a different language sometimes, and I don't understand what you're telling me. So can it be different? Can it be ease? Yes. So how much fun can you have with it all? Thank you so much, you all. Go create even more yummy with your body. Till next time. Bye-bye.